Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I would like to have two thank yous first before I start, and I would like to refresh everybody because we are by the end of the day. I would like to thank the organizer of the conference, and I would like to thank everybody still uh, attending my talk. Uh, it's the last talk. Uh, uh, this work has been done at Texas A&M University uh, with uh, my advisor, Dr. Kalibnaker, and my colleague, uh, Pradeep Sarfabeli. So now we heard a lot about uh, fault tolerance. So now we are going back to the code constructions. And then we are going to do some construction of a uh, finite alpha uh, bit. So I don't do any construction for binary field. However, I do over higher alphabets. So if Q is two, so it means we are in the binary field. So uh, let me introduce subsystem codes are relatively new construction of quantum codes by isolating the active errors into two subsystems. And uh, they are basically uh, to combine the feature of the coherent uh, free subspace, noiseless list subsystems, and the quantum error uh, correcting codes. Such codes, such, uh, such codes offer attractive features uh, because they have simple syndrome calculation and a uh, wide variety of easily implementable fault tolerance. In this talk, uh, I'm not going to, to develop or explain the theory of subsystem codes. However, I'm going to explain uh, code constructions. So this, uh, what I'm going to do here is similar to the famous paper, uh, quantum, error control, uh, quantum error control codes of RGF4 by Steen, Andrein, and Schur. So let me remind myself and you first what is a subsystem code if we have uh, the subsystem code Q can be defined as a subspace to the complex space. Uh, C2QN uh, uh, such that we can compose the code into two subsystems A and B. So basically here we can include the information in subsystem A and just ignore the, uh, if there are some errors in, in the subsystem B. So, uh, so basically an NKRD uh, subsystem code Q has dimension uh, Q to uh, K and then the, the subsystem B, we can call it actually co-subsystem. So I mean by subsystem uh, is a subsystem A and the co-subsystem is a uh, subsystem P. And then it has dimension K to R. And it can detect all errors of less than uh, the minimum distance less than D. So the, I remind myself also and you by the code construction, it's very simple actually to design uh, subsystem codes as we uh, can also define uh, uh, stabilizer codes. So assume we have a, a, a classical code C with length to N of our finite field with Q elements. Again, if Q is two, so we are in the binary field that all know. And then if this code C, I take the intersection of the code C and it's dual, so let us call this code D. So I'm taking arbitrary code C, classical code I mean, and then take its dual, and then let us call the dual code, the intersection of the code and its dual, the code D. Then immediately we can define a subsystem code Q. Basically, it has two subsystems, A and B, and then the subsystem A has dimension. Basically, it's the dimension of the code D dual minus the dimension of the code C. So the subsystem A has dimension. We take the dimension of the entire code D dual. Basically, it's the dual of the code D, which is the intersection of C and C dual. So I start by, by a code C. I take the dual. And then I take the intersection, which is the code D. And then I take the dual of the code D, which is the D dual. So on, then the subsystem B has dimension C uh, uh, the subsystem uh, uh, B has dimension C, dimension of C minus dimension of D. So dimension of the code C min the minus dimension of the code D. And the minimum distance is defined by a weight of a vector in the entire code D dual minus the code C. So also uh, this uh, code, subsystem code basically uh, can detect all errors in the green area. So we can, we, this is called undetectable error. We cannot detect all errors that lie in this green area. And then detectable errors they are actually in the yellow area. So basically the vectors they lie in the, in the subsystem uh, could see and the, the entire space. So in, by this uh, construction, we can define the parameters of the subsystem code. Basically, 
our subsystem code has parameter nk r d over finite field with q elements, and then we already define what's in, in the length of the code. K is the, dim is the dimension of uh, the subsystem A, r is the dimension of the, uh, of the subsystem B, and then K, uh, d is the minimum distance. Uh, before I go to the construction, because I'm going to give many code construction now and the many families, I would like to ask some questions just to refresh uh, the audience. So can subsystem code be better than stabilizer codes? We heard in this conference more than five talks about subsystem codes. My approach here to analyze them is basically do algebraic anal analysis, not uh, fault tolerance analysis or physics analysis, mathematical analysis. I compare them with stabilizer codes and then I, 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 we derive some bounds on the code parameter and then we can actually make charge comparison between subsystem codes and stabilizer codes. So, what the advantages do you have and how to construct the families of subsystem codes? We don't have many families, in fact, of subsystem codes except one or two that has been uh, given by uh, Dave Bacon yesterday. And then, uh, can, the, uh, can they beat the optimal stabilizer codes? My, uh, so I, I will give some bounds and the code construction and families of subsystem codes. Basically, the idea um, we are will derive code parameters similar to the paper has been done by Calder Bank and Drains. So before I go to the code construction, we establish bounds on the code parameters. And bounds are very important to tell us how far can we go. How far can we go by the minimum distance? How good are how good are the codes? And also to reduce the minimum search, the computer search. So we actually drove, uh, and you will feel that you will feel by the bound that we drive here the meaning, the actual meaning of the bound. Because uh, I will give an example, motivate this bound. So we have singleton bound says if you have a, li a linear uh, subsystem code uh, with parameter in the KRD of our finite field with Q elements, then basically what the maximum we can get of the dimension of the summation R plus K is basically N minus 2D plus 2. So if R is zero, so we have the regular singleton bound of stabilizer codes, which is uh, K plus R, uh, K less than or equal to N minus 2 plus T. So this is actually motivated us because uh, so if the if the uh, equality holders send, we call this code uh, MDS codes, and then we have a uh, Boolean search it for he asked a question in his famous paper says are we do we have subsystem codes with length five one and three but he didn't answer and he it's the answer is very simple actually using singleton bound so singleton bound says no we don't have such codes. In fact, there are, there are not many uh, codes uh, with uh, uh, short lengths. So we don't have uh, such codes 5, 1, and R greater than or equals to uh, 1, uh, and the minimum distance is 3. And it's just, uh, we just uh, apply singleton bound. And then we also have different bound, packing bound. It's, uh, I'm actually talking about here for pure codes, for pure subsystem codes. So we also we have similar bound to uh, quantum Hamming bound. Uh, it holds us for impure code. And we all know that uh, Hamming bound for impure uh, stabilizer codes doesn't hold. And also it does not hold for subsystem codes. We have such codes that can break uh, the quantum Hamming bound. So these are our famous two bounds. We also drove some uh, Gilbert for Shamov bound and then linear programming bounds, I will explain them by the end of the talk, if, the, if you have some time. But let me go directly to the code construction. But I will just give a theorem first, famous theorem, that reduce all stabilizer codes to subsystem codes. More than that, it actually map subsystem codes to another subsystem codes. This result may be known by sense, but I couldn't find a proof for it. So I started by proving the theorem. Let Q be a power of a prime. If there exists a subsystem code with parameters n, k, r, d, we can actually to go to sub another subsystem code by just reduce the dimension of the subsystem B, which is, has dimension uh, k to r, and then we can actually uh, increase the, di the, the dimension of the subsystem B. We can reduce the, the, the dimension of subsystem A, and then we can increase the dimension of subsystem P. So what this, the motivation for this theorem is says, 
No matter what you give me a subsystem code, we can still map it to a new subsystem code. Why we do that? Maybe the new subsystem code has good feature for fault tolerance. It has, it might be, uh, has some uh, good features. And then it actually says that more than that, it says if R is one, which is Q power zero, it means it's a stabilizer code. If R is one, it means it's Q power zero, then it actually maps all stabilizer codes wholesale to the subsystem, to the subsystem code as shown in this diagram. So, we have two uh, nice theorem says, uh, if we have a, a subsystem code with NKRD, this is actually similar to the previous theorem, but if just we know the dimension, it's not Q power K, it's just K and R. So we can actually map it to new subsystem codes. And this says same thing. If we have a stabilizer code with NKRD over Q alphabet, we can actually have a subsystem code with this parameter. So we proved, we proved uh, all this uh, known theorem in the literature, but we didn't find a proof for them. From here and on, I will give new construction of subsystem codes, new families. So by now we know that we have many families, in fact, of subsystem codes. Some of them, uh, we draw them from stabilizer codes, and some of them we just draw, draw them from uh, uh, classical coding theory. So in this diagram, I will just go over the diagram and then the mass is there. So if we have a stabilizer code, as I explained in the previous slide, we can map it to a subsystem code. And if we have a pure subsystem code, we can map it to a, st a stabilizer code. This holds us for pure codes. What this diagram says more than that, it says if you have a classical code C, you can actually take the dual and then you can map it to subsystem code. But this, I'm talking here about cyclic subsystem codes that have the, have nice encoding and decoding features than just any arbitrary code. So in the previous slides, I was talking about general classical codes that we can drive subsystem code from them. In this slide, I talk about all cyclic codes. So no matter you give me a, a classical cyclic code, we can actually design a subsystem code. So basically the idea is by using this diagram. Such codes are BCH codes, as Martin was talking uh, about them. So this is the theorem that said we can actually take any cyclic code, a classical code, and then we can actually derive from it a subsystem code with these parameters under these conditions. So from here I will give just example for what I'm talking about. So I take the uh, Reed-Solomon codes. So we all know that Reed-Solomon codes, they are uh, defined over higher alphabets, finite field with uh, Q elements, and the code has length uh, N. And it's a design distance bounded by two, and it's less than, strictly less than N. So the code is defined by a generational polynomial, G of X, it's a multiplication of some roots on the finite field. So let us say it, make it simple like that. We have a code that is generated by a generated polynomial. It's a classical code. I will just drive from it, uh, uh, I will give some condition to drive subsystem code from it. So we, in our work, we developed two CC construction. One is Hermitian and one is uh, uh, Hermitian and the Euclidean construction of subsystem codes. And then uh, basically I show that if the design distance of a Reed Solomon bounded by this value, it's almost the half of the length of the code, we can actually have a subsystem code. And then we have these two uh, lemmas says, assume Q is a power of a prime. Uh, so let us take delta is the defined distance of a classical code, Reed Solomon code bounded by this value. Then there exists a subsystem code with parameters with these parameters, the length of the code, and then the dimension of the subsystem A, dimension of the subsystem P, and then this is basically the minimum distance. We can actually compute exactly the minimum distance. And then this is a Euclidean subsystem code construction, and this is the Hermitian subsystem code construction. Basically, this is over FQ, and this is over FQ square. So uh, I will just give a small example for, for the math I was describing in the very first uh, two slides. So let us take an example, very a small example. Suppose you have a code C defined by a defining set one, two, three. These elements are taken from this defining set, and then we are talking about finite field with seven uh, elements. So FEQ is seven and the N is six. And then we can actually take the dual of the code C, which is defined by this defining set. Defining a set, it actually gonna give us the generated polynomial G of X. 
Once it, no, we know the general polynomial of a code, we can actually know the dimension of the code by this known uh, fact. So basically, we take the intersection of the defining set that define the code C and the defining set, the union of the two uh, uh, defining set of the code C and its dual, and then we have the defining set of the code D. And then basically, uh, the defining set of the code D, from it we can actually compute the dimension of the code D, and then we also know the dimension of the code C, it's basically n minus the degree. The degree we have three roots here, so the, the, the dimension of the code C is three, basically it's six minus three, and then the code, do, the code D dual is basically has degree four because it's six minus, it has two roots, so we have the dimension of the code D. Then we can actually compute the dimension and the parameters of the subsystem code, which is basically 4 minus 3, and uh, we can actually compute also R, the gauge is basically uh, 2 minus, uh, 3 minus 2. And then we have a subsystem code with 6, 1, th uh, 6, 1, 3 over 6, 1, 1, 3 over uh, higher alphabets. So this is basically the short subsystem code that over higher alphabets, over 7. So this is shorter than uh, Bacon shear code, for example. I also, in the next slide, I will, I will give the short subsystem codes that we can actually obtain. So in this slide, I claim that the shortest subsystem code that can be obtain over the binary field is 8, 1, 2, and the minimum distance is 3. This is the shortest subsystem code that we can obtain over binary field. And over finite field with Q elements, this is the shortest subsystem code that we can obtain. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there is a typo. It's 6, 1, 1, 3 over uh, uh, finite field with Q elements. This is actually important because we need to analyze such codes. We analyzed 5, 1, 3 stabilizer codes, but no one uh, analyzed these codes. Maybe they have some good feature for full tolerance. We, do, we still don't know. Uh, so we have, uh, but I also claim that there is no non-trivial subsystem code 7113 over binary field. So you cannot have a stabilizer, non-trivial stabilizer to define this code. So this is a stabilizer of the subsystem code. Uh, from here uh, till the end of the talk, I will give many, many families and codes. I, I, I did them by magma, using computer, magma computer algebra. So for example, uh, I will give tables of the optimal subsystem codes. So, meaning that they obey singleton bound with equality. So here are many subsystem codes. So for example, if I start by a Reed-Solomon code, the construction I give before, subsystem code that has a length 8, dimension 6, and distance 3 of our finite field with uh, 9 elements, basically we can obtain a subsystem code with these parameters, 8, 8, 1, 5, uh, 2. So the dimension is one, but we can actually forget about, about the errors that has happened in subsystem B with uh, dimension five. And also we can, uh, if we can look at this carefully, we can actually obtain also bacon short code uh, over higher alphabets, over just FQ3 from Reed solomon code. Uh, there are some nice features here because for example, you can obtain a subsystem code with dimension 23 uh, 24, but it has very high dimension, 21, and then the distance is 2. This code can, can detect one error. But this such a code can actually, you can encode 19 qubits into uh, 24, but the distance is serious, so you can correct one error. Uh, next, I will also give tables, many families, many tables of subsystem code derived from uh, BCH codes. For example, here, the BCH codes, they have nice features that we can actually play with the design distance, and, uh, and then we can actually also vary the minimum distance of the codes. For example, if you have a, a BC, classical BCH codes with length 15 and dimension 8, and the distance is 6, we can actually, and the, the design distance of this code is 6, we can actually obtain a subsystem code that has distance 5. And then, uh, and then the, the length of the subsystem code is 15, and uh, we can actually include one. But also, you can have subsystem code design, uh, drop, derived from BCH codes with length 15 and dimension 5, and then the code can correct up to one error over binary field. So I claim maybe this code is better than the 
the usual code that we keep talking about, 9143 code that we keep repeating it, might be this high uh, length, I agree, but it might, but, but we actually encode five qubits in such a codes. Uh, also, this code is interesting because it, it has, it, it can actually encode half of the qubits, eight up to 17, and then the distance is four of our binary field. And then for all these codes, we can actually, we know the, st the, the stabilizer, the, the stabilizer for this code. We know the, the, sub the, the, the structure of the code. Uh, here, I also give uh, linear programming bound for subsystem codes. Uh, so basically, in, in this, this is very similar to the, the paper that has been done by Rian Shore, uh, Calder Bank, the linear programming bound for a stabilizer code, I give it here for subsystem codes. So what this tell us, we cannot have codes better, more than these codes. But it actually also gives us a negative result. What does it mean? It means you cannot have, for example, you cannot have subsystem code with parameters, with lens uh, seven and dimension one, and uh, R is three and distance is four. So this is upper bound on the code parameters. So here, I, I actually, uh, I noticed something interesting because if we, the length is nine and the dimension is one, so we can actually have, we can obtain, there is a possibility, let me say it like this, there is a possibility to obtain a code better than bacon shirt code. But I don't claim that I have the stabilizer for it. But the linear programming bound tell us we can obtain it. So such a code because the linear programming says we can have nine, dimension one, and the distance is three. So we can sure this is actually the maximum we can get is six. So we cannot have subsystem code with lens n, one, and then seven and three. You can have obtained six, five, up to four. Four is already known the bacon short code. So this is the linear programming down for subsystem code parameters. Yeah, I just have one minute and that's it. Yeah, this is the last, uh, the last slide. So in conclusion, subsystem code can be constructed from classical code without the need for self-orthogonal conditions. We know the structure of these codes. Uh, many families, I show many families in this talk and I give also uh, bounds on the subsystem code parameters. For fault tolerance and uh, syndrome measurement, stabilizer codes, we know that they have N minus K syndrome measurement. Subsystem codes, they have N minus K minus R for fixed N and D. So fault tolerance operations of a family of subsystem codes. When we talk about, my understanding that when we talk about fault tolerance, we, we talk about one code, one code by specific parameters, but we never talk about family of codes, how they act, how the fault tolerance operations for a family of code, class of code, by various uh, lens and dimension and uh, minimum distance. Uh, also, the conclusion here between stabilizer and subsystem codes, all classes of stabilizer codes, impure and, and pure, they can actually be reduced or they can be transferred to stabilizer codes. However, all pure subsystem codes are also stabilizer codes. But the interesting is, what about the impure subsystem codes? Impure subsystem codes are superior for two reasons. First, there is no bounds for them, either for uh, quantum error corrections or for subsystem codes. We don't know the bound for impure uh, codes. I'm talking about the Hamming bound. So if, we have, if you have big insure code 413 subsystem code, you cannot actually re reduce it to uh, 5953 uh, uh, stabilizer codes, and this is very obvious. It does not even obey the Hamming bound, nor it does obey the linear programming bound. Because this code, we, do, we don't have this code, such a code. The linear programming bound for quantum error corrections, we don't have this such a code. But it, it exists. If you transfer it, if you have this, uh, if we know that we have this subsystem code uh, because we do have the stabilizer and it's not linear for it. So, so this I conclude by this uh, for now, and then this is basically the work I did with Dukla Karabanekar in the two papers, subsystem code constructions. I will give all this, what I'm talking about, the bounds and, and tables of, and families of subsystem code, and then the work with uh, the, the paper that we have in archive. Thank you. So we have time for a question. Uh, and
construct this, he constructed from lattice, I can construct it from Reed Solomon, I just show it, uh, from VCH codes. Uh, now I open the questions, can we, uh, we have two, sub I actually I asked him this question yesterday, I asked different beginners already this question, I asked him, we have two, one, one, two stabilizers for one code, are they mapped to each other? Or maybe the, the, the stabilizer that we have is better than your stabilizer because it has good feature for, for fault tolerance. So the answer I don't know and he doesn't know the answer. As far as I understand. So the question is we have two stabilizers for one code. Which one is, is has nice feature for photo tolerance or maybe for decoding or encoding? The one that has been drawn from latex, lattice or the one has been drawn from BCH classical coding theory? Thanks a lot again.